Welcome to the second episode of Probably Nothing, I'm Alexander. The project is growing nicely with over 800 subscribers now. Maybe we'll even crack the 1000 this week. I would also like to thank Bernhard, my first patron. It makes me happy to see that the support of the project is accepted slowly, but I have to go in advance. Let's get straight to the news of the last days. Tango Labs announced that they are now a member of the Decentralized Identity Foundation, short DIF. Adamski wrote right after that on Discord that the month of May will be full of updates and news. So keep an eye on Tango Labs. Tango Labs is responsible for the identity suit Amber, Cropley, Tixit and Individni. Maybe they will be also be the first benefits for the owners of the NFTs. Hans Moog has invited to discuss about liquid sharding. There he mentioned that the concepts for Epoch commitment chains are ready and now once could start about a specification of fluid sharding frameworks. Hans suggestions is based on an older post of his. In this one he wants to untangle the tangle. There he wants to assign coordinates for each confined space to locate the nodes that way. Thus, it is possible to define a correct place for this exception like in a coordinate system and to generate different regions, in example shards. For simplicity he takes a one dimensional representation which is divided into seven shards. For example, the nodes decide themselves how many shards they monitor but at least three. Each node can download the entire meta tangle. If you want to divide more into this, you will find the link to Contraposal's suggestions in this description. On this code, Philo has given an update on EPSI. The EPSI team is still working on phase 2A and once all participations have submitted everything, the commissions will evaluate everything and publish the results on the official EPSI channels. That will be on the official site, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm very excited to see how the IOTA Foundation will perform here. The EPSI project is one of the important flagship projects the IOTA Foundation has in my eyes. A little update on Dell and Dell Technologies World. In episode 1 of Probably Nothing, I mentioned that there was no mention of IOTA or the Alvarium project on the website. But if you search for the project on the website, there is a small info where IOTA and Alvarium are mentioned. For this information, it appears that there will be a deep dive session with experts who will explain the integrity and security of data in collaboration with IOTA and Climate Check, based on a Canadian authority. The agency wants to automatically monitor emissions from factories across the country in near real time. With that, my guess around the Dell and Alvarium issue was correct. Now let's hope to get information on that as soon as possible or even a video. The IOTA Einsteigerguide.de has been launched with a new website. All those who want to use the whole ecosystem to get started can now do again. A great article has appeared about the future of mobility between Gaia X and IOTA. A no fee, climate friendly and trustworthy infrastructure is assumed, all of which IOTA offers. The IOTA Foundation is part of the Gaia X Far Roams and the project family ensure close collaboration and regulator exchange also with the other projects in Gaia X for future mobility. 80 partners from industry and academia are developing the foundations for intelligent mobility, vehicle technology concepts and industrial applications. Projects in the family are coordinated by the Institute of AI Security of the German Aerospace Center DLR. Key topics are digitalization, traffic, smart mobility, big data and artificial intelligence. The article clearly shows the scope of Gaia-X and the project can change an incredible amount which is turn is in an immense boost for IOTA. In addition, the blog post made it to CoinMarketCap as article of the day. The second layer scaling research team released an update for the week. Two researchers and one student are now working on managing assembly. And this week two more external researchers will join the team and they hope to get them excited enough to stay with and work for IOTA in the future. The fans together which is trying to inspire the sports world with IOTA is currently choosing a name for the Miami basketball team. Among them are the Miami Tanglers and Miami Tangle, clearly my favorites. Cast your vote and the four favorites will then be in the Sooniverse for closer election. Voting is mandatory, you have three days. 
Let's move on to new platforms. One is called ZeroSwap Exchange and is a DEX that Assembly wants to use. The website is currently not available. This means that the project will probably start. I also wrote to the team to get more details but they are silent at the moment. And the second platform is Feelers.Finance, also a DEX that the website is available. Unfortunately, this website is not yet so optimal prepared and shows an unfinished impression, which is not bad as a first sign. The opening is target for July 2023. Sandra Jörg, CEO and founder of Blackpin, was guest on Mensch, Mächte, Meinungen or MMM, for short on the Region TV channel. She spoke with host Ralph about awards, nominations and her career. She also talked about the plan to launch a messenger in the summer of 2022. The plan is to set the cost per user at 3 euros and later introduce price packages. According to Sandra Jörg, there are already several interested parties and investors. There was no mention of IOTA, but a look at their homepage reveals what's under the hood. Jumbo Block, a provider of flood protection, water storage, civil defense, etc., has published a graphic about real time monitoring and population protection. In the course of this, I asked Jumbo Block a few questions about their project, the integration of IOTA, and its future. Anyone who wants more of this kind of internal stuff, please post in the comments. Here we go. Tell something about yourself, your company and the product. Jumbo Block is a project of the Sani Group and some project partners companies. The company has acquired a broad technical know-how over decades, which is now used, for example, in the development and modern combustion system and other green solutions for industry. Retention is now an integral part of plant design and thus prevented measures against rain and flood events, which are exacerbated by climate change and will occur more frequently in the future, are also in the portfolio. This is how Jumbo Block idea was born. The customer portfolio ranged from internal companies to government organizations. Climate change is increasingly leading to flooding and high water events with enormous damage. In sealed and built up areas, systems to avert danger make sense, but conventional construction methods are often no feasible. This is exactly why we have developed our system. With our patent system, we can construct large construction system areas and rooms inside and outside build up areas, which will participation and surface water or even flood water can be collected in a target manner. Construction projects can be quickly and easily implemented even in small areas to relieve infrastructure and traffic flows during construction. Jumbo Block is extremely stable, statically very strong, loadable, can be built over and is even possible for heavy traffic. With Jumbo Block, land is engaged flood areas can be created easily and cost efficiently in urban areas. For the first time it is possible to protect large areas even when a continuous geometric shape is not feasible. This is because the flood plains and water storage areas with virtuality unlimited possibilities can be lined up and stacked several times to form pits and catch basins. How did you come across IOTA? through a contribution by a report about David Sunstebo in 2015-2016, we already found it very interesting back then. How easy or how difficult was the integration of IOTA? In our case it's only about documentatic sensor data. For this we used industry standard battery powered IoT ultrasonic sensors. They record fill level of jumbo block systems and their geoposition and radio data security to the internet the tangle. Do you get help from the IOTA Foundation? No. What do you hope for achieve by integrating IOTA? Reliable networking and management of sensor and sensor data, especially in the area of flood protection and resident information, secure access management and seamless digital images of measurements, rapid development and easy customization. Why do you not use other blockchain or DLT? We offer innovate environmentally friendly products that aim to minimize pollutions and save energy. Doesn't fit with blockchain. IOTA is the only sensible, technologically interesting and energy saving approach at the moment. Therefore we believe in a great entrepreneur acceptance in the medium and long term and therefore also an accessible technological future of IOTA. Awareness and acceptance by politic and the public. This is also a required support from the community. 
reference plans, infrastructure, industry and population protection against floods and inundation. Do you have new products? Yes. Will be there a greater integration of IOTA? Yes. Are you invested in IOTA yourself? Yes. Thank you for answering the questions and for your time. Mesh Plus has also spoken up again. According to a tweet from the 29th of April, they have written over 190,000 lines of code and mining can start soon. Community member The Angel asked about the coast and the hardware and whether they can be powered by solar and battery. Quote, we are working on several options, including a DIY gateway, which will be a bit cheaper than a ready-made gateway, but will require some time and technical knowledge. Yes, you can run on solar, they are no power hungry. Well, if that doesn't sound promising. On Wednesday, Yota released a eShow proof of concept day that everyone can try. You can find the link in the description. In this webshop, you can buy, for example, alcohol or non alcohol drinks. As well, unknown, the purchase of alcoholic beverage is associated with an age restriction. In this proof of concept, we can use different options based on a Yota identity. In the first case, we don't reach the authority and so we can't buy the alcohol. Only when our identity matches with the ages of majority, we are allowed to continue buying. This demo was created in collaboration with EnsureSec and Kaixa Bank. Here it is clearly shown what implications IOTA will have in e-commerce as well. To all people who have a note at Tangle Bay, Swarm has been released in version 2. This update adds the option of shimmer nodes, which of course cannot be used yet, other than that there are several improvements and bug fixes. A wild speculation on my part. The Shimmer Twitter account is tweeting quite a lot this week. He never did that before. Is it a sign that the giant Shimmer is awakening? In the first post he welcomes the new fans. On the same day there is a posting that all upgrades coming to the mainnet will be tested on Shimmer first. May is really a hot candidate of mine in terms of release. The May projects from episode 1, the integration in Tangle Bay, there is a lot of evidence that the launch is prepared. When do you guys think Shimmer will be released? Silicon Droid built smartwatches with which you can track your Hornet node, the IOTA price and of course the time. The development of the first watches is done and is slowly tracking to the orders. Antonio, the defender and savior of the community has published a short video on Twitter. Does anyone know anyone who has a smartwatch that was made specifically for a cryptocurrency? Moving on to Panama and the legitimization of the 8 cryptocurrencies. This use is probably approved by the government without any restrictions. At least that's what comes out of a Yahoo article. Among them there are following cryptocurrencies, IOTA, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, XDC Network, Elrond, Stella and Algorand. So we can be curious what impact and traction this legalization will have in the future, especially on IOTA. If you have time and mathematical understanding, you should read the new research paper on counting attacks for DAG based DLTs. In this 8-page paper, the researchers presented a feedback approach for developing an attack defense strategy for DAG-based distributed ledgers. They develop a model to analyze the behavior of the ledger under the so-called TIPS inflation attack to design a controlled strategy to counter this attack strategy. The defenses of this approach is demonstrated through a theoretical analysis in the form of two theorems on the stability properties on the ledger with and without a controller, as well as extensive Monte Carlo simulations of an agent-based model of the distributed ledger. This year, City Exchange was made waves with the project in Trondheim. Now this project has been selected by the European Commission to be one of the 100 projects as a mission city. The Commission will ask the 100 selection cities to develop climate city contracts, which will include an overall plan for climate neutrality in all sectors such as energy, buildings, waste management and transport as well as corresponding investment plans. Kapi submitted a proposal to increase the shimmer bid for a community treasury. To do this, he wants to increase the offer by 20%. The proposal has been well received by the community on the website or Twitter. As always, the entire IOTA community is invited to give their opinion on the matter. Note that their own share will be dilute, of course. 
but that again can push many projects and bring more use cases. New projects bring new people into the ecosystem who buys and use the token and that increase the price again. But these are just suggestions. On the whole, I agree with the proposal to introduce a treasury like the IOTA token and the fund project. What do you guys say? Do you agree with the 20%? For those of you who have already read through the first paper, you can move right along. IOTA published yesterday the paper Reality-Based UTXO Ledger. The 36 page described the UTXO model, unspent transaction output, this is often used in the distributed ledger technology, field to transfer value between participations. One of its advantages is that it's allowed parallel processing of transactions, since independent transactions can be added in any order. This property of order, invariance and parallelizability has potential advantages in terms and scalability. However, since the UTXO ledger is an append-only data structure, these advantages are negated by the percents of conflicted transactions. The paper proposed an extended UTXO ledger model that optimistically updated the ledger and tracks the dependencies of the possible conflict. In the presence of a conflict resolution mechanism, the researchers proposed the method to reduce the extended ledger back to a consistent UTXO ledger. This paper has been dubbed by some people as an of the important development in IOTA. And lastly, a couple of small announcements. TangleSwap joins Assembly, there was a blog article about this and Camelabs are now official partners of the IOTA foundations. And as it is that you are close to finish the video, CoinMarketCap article of the day on the 5th of May is the article that TangleSwap joins Assembly. I think CoinMarketCap is in love with IOTA. At the same time, IOTA published a paper on Tangle 2.0, leaderless Nakamoto consensus on the heaviest DAG. Quote, we presented theoretical foundations of Tangle 2.0 and probabilistic leaderless consensus protocol based on a direct acrylic graph called the Tangle. The Tangle is the natural successor to the blockchain at the next evolutionary step as it offers features suitable to create more efficient and scalable distributed ledger solutions. Consensus is no longer found in the longest chain but in the heaviest DAG where proof of work is replaced by a stake or reputated based weight function. The DAG structure and underlying reality-based UTXO ledger enabled parallel validation of transactions without the need for an overall order. Moreover, it enables the eliminations of intermediary miners and validators, allowing a pure two-step process that follows the proposed vote paradigm at the node level rather than the validator level. We propose a framework to analyze liveness and security under different communication and adversary models. This allows us to provide impossibility results in same edge cases and in the asynchronous communication model. We provide a formal proof of protocol security under the common random coin assumption. That's it for the episode 2 and all the great news that was probably nothing again. Stay hard and look forward for the future. You never know what it will offer, but it will exciting.